Hey everybody, welcome back to the Haven Family Farm. Thank you for joining me for today's video. What we're gonna work on is my 1947 Farmall H behind me. If you've been following along in the little video series here for the last few videos, uh, one of them, we took the gas tank off, cleaned it, put an inline filter in, had some carburetor issues. The second video, we took the carburetor off, uh, cleaned that up, got the tractor running again, took care of that issue. So the tractor's running, and uh, what the next step here I'd like to do is in the last year or so working on the tractor, I noticed the, well, we have, still have an oil pressure issue, and I noticed there's some sludge kind of built up on uh, the interior of the engine. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to run a kind of a, a sludge remover engine cleaner through it, I don't know how well those products work, but I thought I'd try it anyway. So we're gonna do that first. Then we're gonna drop the oil. We'll drop the oil pan. I believe there's like a suction screen and a pickup tube down in there. We'll probably take that off and try and clean it up and uh, see, if, see how dirty that is and see if maybe that'll help our oil pressure issue. Uh, and then we're gonna put a, a different oil back in it than what we ran the last time. I put a straight 30 weight in it last time and we're gonna do something different this time. So let's get started here. Uh, we're gonna warm the tractor up and then we'll get our uh, sledge remover in there and run that. I think it says like five minutes or whatever and then drop the oil. So let's get started here. So we got it running. The instructions on the bottle say to get it up to operating temperature before you put the cleaner in. I thought I'd show you, you know, we got good oil pressure now. So we're gonna let this run and warm up and then I'll show you the next step and the product we're gonna use. Okay, she's nice and warm now. So this is what I got to use, nothing special. Just from Napa, an engine fast flush. It says get the engine up to temperature nice and warm. You dump this in and uh, five minutes. That's all you leave it in there and then you drop the oil out, so. Somebody tighten this too much. There we go. Fire her back up. some gloves on just so whatever chemical was in that engine flush you know it says not to get it on your skin I don't know a lot of products say that sometimes it doesn't matter but we did our five minutes so now let's see if we can get this drained out of here there's always that fun tipping point between when the plug is almost ready to come out and it does come out because you don't want to drop it there she goes. There's a bunch of goop in the bottom of the plug here too. So I don't know if the oil being so dirty is partially because of that engine flush knocking stuff loose. So we'll let that drain out now for a while. We'll get this uh, plug cleaned up after. And uh, once it drains for a while, we'll be ready to drop the uh, oil pan and see what it looks like. All right, let's go ahead and drain out the uh, oil filter housing here. We got a pan that we might be able to hold up there. Try not to make too big of a mess here. Well, we caught some of it. <laughs> the floor is catching the rest of it. It's not really dirty, but we'll clean it out before we put it back. This thing is still draining a bit. Our filter, we can't really see anything other than the oil is really dirty. Okay, I got the housing cleaned up. The uh, seal that's there, I put some grease on that, cleaned that up. We got our plug back in. So now we're going to put our new filter in here, sitting down in there good, 
and then we'll snug this up. All right, we are ready to start dropping the oil pan. I'm just gonna break these loose here by hand just to make sure that there aren't any that uh, are in there too tight or something. And then I got a little quarter inch drive impact. Yep, that one will have to get with a wrench that I'm gonna throw on here to whip them out the rest of the way. But sometimes it's better to just start them by hand like this. taking the last bolt out now unless I missed any I think the only thing holding this in or holding it up there is just maybe the gasket oh there it goes down she comes definitely some sludge in there all right there is the inside of the oil pan there's definitely a layer of sludge in the bottom there so we'll obviously we'll clean up this oil pan good before we put it back on there. But part of what I wanted to see here was about maybe cleaning this pickup screen here, uh, taking this completely off the tractor and uh, making sure the tube and everything here is all cleaned out. So let's see about getting this suction screen off. Never done this before. I'm hoping that just pulling this cotter pin here, where the heck is the other end of it? Will, uh, there it is. Will allow this to slide out. There we go, there's the cotter pin. Now, what happens? Oh yeah. So what holds that in there? I don't know. Well, we got it off. So now we can see about cleaning it up. So I managed to take this apart so far, a couple pieces here. I don't know, you can probably see with the lighting here, there is just like gunk all the way around on the underside of that screen. Now the center's open, you know, that's where the hole is, but it makes me wonder if just this center, can the tractor pull quite enough oil when it's working hard? So I'm gonna try and carefully get this screen out of here so that we can clean all up underneath it. I tried putting it in some solution and swishing it around. I tried spraying brake cleaner, but I just can't get this gunk out of there. So I think I'm gonna try and carefully get this screen off and clean, uh, you know, behind it, under it, whatever. Okay, so I got that popped up. It's probably gonna be fun to put back in there. I'm gonna have to pry this lip open, but you can kind of see how plugged up that screen is. And that's after I've cleaned it some. I've spent 20 minutes cleaning this before I decided to take it apart. So now I'm gonna to continue to clean it and hopefully we'll get all that stuff off and get the screen completely opened up. Well, here's the bottom of our oil pan. You guys can see that there. Pretty good layer of sludge in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scrape this out and clean the oil pan all up so it'll be ready to go back in. Yuck. All right, so it's the next day now. I let the, this stuff kind of dry down, finished wiping it up here today. Here's all the bolts. Interesting thing here, uh, apparently somebody must have lost one at some point and uh, they found one and just cut it down to fit in there. <laughs> there was only one of those. So at some point when somebody was into the engine, that's what they did. We got this guy here. I don't know if I showed you. You can perfectly see through that screen now. So we're going to get it all tucked back in here and pinch this uh, tin material back down. And then we got to get this little guy put back on the top. And here's our oil pan cleaned up. We got our gasket over here. So as you can see, the surface isn't perfect. Uh, it'll probably seal okay, but I'm going to put some of this uh, Permatex high tack on here. All right, we got to get this guy tucked back in here. So now what we're gonna do is just go along with our pliers and we're just gonna pinch this edge here gently back down. There, good to go. So that's done. 
Now we gotta get this guy here put back on. Is it bad that I don't remember which way it was on there? Okay, so I kind of have some marks here where I pried off the little tabs. So that helps me to kind of get this thing lined back up to slide it back on there. All right, got that guy on there good. Not coming back off. So this is ready to go back on the tractor. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we'll work on the oil pan and get the gasket set on there. All right, now for the hard part, getting this down on here where it needs to go, because as soon as it, it's gonna start sticking, it's already stuck to my gloves. Well, that's nice. The uh, gasket holes don't perfectly line up. I mean, enough to get the bolts through, but... All right, there we go. We'll let that sit a few minutes, and uh, we'll throw it on the tractor. Okay, so first thing we got to do here is put our pickup screen back in. I believe that's how it goes. I got a new cotter pin to put in there. The one that uh, I have to put in here is too long. So what we'll do is we'll kind of get it bent around and then we'll just cut it, cut it off here. Okay, I think we're ready for the fun part, which is trying to get this oil pan in place. This would be a lot easier with a second person, but we're gonna do what we can do. All righty. All right, I'm going to go around and get some of these bolts started so it doesn't fall off. Okay, got them all started. We're going to put them back in just by hand. I'm not sure if there's a torque spec or a sequence that you have to do this. So I am just going to start... with the center ones and uh, work my way out just because that makes the most sense to me so I'll do these two here and then I'll jump to the other side and do those two and then work my way out on each side and then we'll be ready to put the uh, drain plug back in all right so we're putting some oil in. <laughs> we'll see if we can start a little controversy here. So the oil I'm putting in is 15W40. Now, I know people are gonna say 30 weight, low ash 30 weight. I don't disagree with you there. However, when I first got this tractor, I changed the oil in it, changed the filter before I really did anything with it. And I have an oil pressure problem with this tractor. It has beautiful oil pressure when it's cold. When it gets warm, when you're working it, it fades off. Now, 
That could be because the engine is just tired. Who knows? But uh, I thought I would try something a little bit different in here. Different type of oil and see if that helped the oil pressure issue. Um, I mean, I figure at some point this engine's been rebuilt at least once since 1947. Who knows how many times, but I imagine that things are uh, kind of tired in there with the, I don't want to say dirtiness of the engine, but it wasn't super clean. So I don't know if people really maintained it as well as they could have uh, previous owners, you know. So uh, that's what we're going to try. And uh, if it doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever with the oil pressure or it makes it worse, whatever, then uh, I will just, I'll just drop it back out of there and go back to 30 weight or try something different. Uh, not a big deal, but I figure whatever, it's worth a shot. It's funny that there's not a seal or anything on this. I guess there just isn't enough pressure or volume coming up to this cap to uh, have it leak. Snug it down, there we go. All right, I put six quarts of oil in there. You guys only saw me do three, but I did put six in there. Dipstick's good. Let's fire it up and see what happens. If it blows up, you guys are gonna be the, have a front row seat and get the first to see that that happens. So I'm gonna watch the oil pressure gauge up here and uh, let's go for it. There we go, just needed some choke. to check it for leaks too. There's our oil pressure at idle. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry you guys got stuck. Big gushing leaks anywhere. guys thanks for watching uh, so far so good we really won't know whether that helped our oil pressure issue everything that we did there uh, the new oil cleaning the screen doing the engine flush we won't know if that stuff helped until we actually get the tractor out and start working it a little bit and really heat it up so you're gonna want to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss that upcoming video uh, thanks for watching everybody like I said I think already my battery's dying so I'm in a hurry there is gonna be a video I'm gonna do. We're just gonna do a little tune-up on the tractor, plugs, wires, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope to see y'all in the next video.